over the weekend that I have not done one of my deep focus jazz episodes in over three months. So here you are everyone, the content that you may not have been waiting for. <laughs> this is Deep Focus Jazz episode six. I hope you enjoyed that vignette. Uh, today's episode is all about the jazz influences of Steely Dan. Steely Dan, of course, the main compatriots in Steely Dan, Donald Fagan, and the late Walter Becker. This is really a tribute to them, and I am only going to be scratching the surface here. Uh, otherwise, this would be about a 45-minute video. I'm trying to keep these down between 10 and 15 minutes, depending on how much I jibber-jabber. Um, that opening vignette, there are so many direct references back to jazz titles in several Steely Dan records, as well as Donald Fagan's Nightfly and others. Um, we're going to talk more about that, but I want to kind of lead off and just say that one of the main people that Donald Fagan uh, holds in high esteem is Charlie Parker, the great Charlie Parker, and I was checking my collection I don't have any Charlie Parker. What I do have is an amazing record um, with a great cast of characters, the great Sonny Stitt. Stitt plays Bird. This is, uh, of course, a tribute to Charlie Parker. Uh, all original Parker compositions included. Um, he had an amazing uh, band with him for this kind of session. Richard Davis, the late Richard Davis, was on bass. John Lewis on piano, Jim Hall on guitar, Connie Kay on drums. Um, if you don't have this, this can be found relatively, relatively inexpensively. Um, I I happened to pick up an original um, this past summer. Actually, I was on a trip in Boise, Idaho, 
there is a really nice copy there, that original label. Um, that's going to have to do it for Charlie Parker, but uh, note to self, I need to look for some Charlie Parker. Now, you'll see that I, I listed a couple source uh, material um, items or pieces of content that I referenced when I was thinking about this video. One of them uh, was a 2002 radio interview with Donald and Walter on Marion McPartland's piano jazz radio show. And that is really a lovely thing to go find. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, it's about a 45 minute to an hour episode. And they just talk back and forth about jazz, about some Steely Dan records. Um, they do some playing, particularly uh, Donald was playing piano and they had members of the Steely Dan band at that point in time, Keith Carlock and drums. Um, as an example, and they played a really cool uh, version of Mood Indigo that you can find on this amazing record. This is the uh, one of the acoustic sounds pressings. Um, these things are just so amazing. And uh, you can find these new in print for $35, $40. Um, I'm sure you can find these on Discogs as well, but these things just sound amazing. And Moon, Mood Indigo is track three, tra I'm sorry, track four on side one. Now, Charles Mingus is one of the artists. If you delve into Fagan's history, he grew up in uh, the suburbs of New York and New Jersey, of course, and he went into the city. I think he had an uncle that would bring him in to the city to see artists. One of the places they went was Village Vanguard. Uh, this is the 1960s, the early 60s, the late 50s. And they saw Mingus live on many occasions. So, um, perfect touch point there. During that same interview, um, Marion McPortland asked Walter who his jazz guitar heroes were. And, you know, they, they did mention Jim Hall, who was on uh, the, the Stitt Plays Bird record. Um, but Walter holds Grant Green as his number one favorite jazz guitarist, and for good reason. This is an amazing tone poet. Uh, copy that came out of Born to be Blue several years ago. This is highly recommended. Um, you know, the Tone Poet Treatment is well known. Kevin Gray, uh, very nice gatefold with some session photographs and uh, original packaging. Very, very nice. Let's talk more about those albums that I showed in the vignette. In 1982, Donald Fagan put out his first solo record, The Nightfly. It's really a nostalgic piece, an audio, an audio biographical piece for Fagan. Uh, you can see that, you know, one of the things he talks about in interviews is staying up late and listening to jazz coming out of Manhattan uh, when he was in New Jersey, in the suburbs, a kind of a, a cookie cutter, cutter suburb that he lived in in New Jersey. And you can see that there's a particular title here. Uh, Fagan, of course, is uh, kind of portraying a late night jazz DJ. Love this shot. And uh, the album in question, of course, Sonny Rollins and the Contemporary Leaders. This is a very nice OJC copy of this record. Um, it does have a barcode, so it could be a digital cut. Doesn't matter. It sounds glorious and uh, highly recommended. The previous album for Donald Fagan that he was involved in, of course, was Gaucho. Uh, finally came out in late 1980. And he and Donald were doing a long-form interview uh, for that record, promoting the record, 
And uh, they talked to this journalist, and, and they were a little bit caught off guard. The journalist in question um, was actually very, very good, very steeped in music history. He kind of knew his stuff, uh, as they say. And he, he was not starstruck in the least. And he immediately saw... Um, he... he <laughs> He immediately saw a connection between the title track on Gaucho and a record that came out five or six years prior called Belonging. And of course, the band leader on this record is Keith Jarrett. This is an amazing title. Um, it is an ECM. Uh, great sound quality on this record. The opening stanza... Um, to a song called Long As You Know You're Living Yours. It's the final track on side one. You can hear echoes of that, direct echoes, uh, and it is not subtle on Gaucho, the title track. And the interviewer asked Donald, I think specifically, about that song. And he freely admitted, oh yeah, I was, you know, I was really impressed with that piece that Keith did. And, um, you know, I think they ended the interview and, and um, during the course of that interview, that portion was supposed to be on background and kind of off the record. And the interviewer left the hotel room where they had met and went back and said, hey, are you sure? We can't talk about that. And Donald and Walter kind of looked at each other and said, go ahead. And uh, the rest is history. Uh, Keith Jarrett's attorneys uh, read that interview, heard the record, and immediately filed a lawsuit. And um, basically what happened is Jarrett was given songwriting credit for that particular song, shared in the royalties moving forward. And uh, that's the end of the story. How about the amazing title track to Asia? Recorded at the Village Recorders uh, in Santa Monica, California, just off the, the 405. Um, these guys wanted to have Wayne Shorter come in and add a very cool, tasteful solo to that title track. And Wayne Shorter originally turned down Donald Fagan and Walter Becker. But then there was another person who was actually running the studio at that point in time. He knew someone who knew Wayne, convinced Wayne to come in. They played him the music. He absolutely loved it. Wayne Shorter was in the building for all of about 35 minutes. And he laid down that incredible solo on Asia um over about uh, six takes and they basically comped together portions of those six takes and that's what you will hear on the record so very very cool story this is a fun record by the way this is uh this is an original um it is in near mint condition the cover is very very beat up but i think i picked this up for like 14 dollars this past summer Finally, the 1974 Steely Dan record, Pretzel Logic. There is, uh, there is an ode to Charlie Parker here, of course. Uh, first song on side two, Parker's Band. An amazing track, by the way. But when we're thinking about jazz and another kind of direct callback, uh, anybody who, who listens to Rickety Don't Lose That Number in the opening piano um, chords as they, as they move into that song, that's, of course, lifted. <laughs> it's almost a direct lift from Song for My Father, track one, side one. This is a white B pressing, really, really great sounding. It does have Van Gelder in the dead wax, and um, I'm really happy to have this. I used to have 
I think I had an OJC pressing of this that I let go after I picked this up also this past summer in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Like I said, I'm just scratching the surface here today. Maybe I'll do an even more extensive or a part two. But that is today, episode six, Deep Focus Jazz, all about Steely Dan, influences and encounters in jazz. Thanks very much.